Why in the world are lenders making it so complicated to finance condos? Think about it this way. If I'm financing you as a lender for a single family home, it's you and me. When it comes to a condo, I'm also throwing an association into the loop. I'm now not depending upon just you to work with just me to get all those things done. Now there's a whole association. And on top of the whole association, condo financing. Is it hard? Absolutely. Is it impossible? No, it's actually not. If you want to avoid the horrible pain of getting your condo loan denied, stay tuned to the end so I give you all the scoop. Have you been stopped in your tracks by a realtor when you were so excited and thought you were going to buy a condo because they thought you would have to pay cash? Well, either way, I want you to better understand how to avoid that situation. And the first place to start is talking about warrantable versus non-warrantable. A warrantable condo is something that falls under Fannie and Freddie guidelines and in the box that they give you when financing condos. Non-warrantable means it does not fit in that box. And when a condo is non-warrantable, it's considered to be more risky and it's very difficult to finance, but as promised, not impossible. Let's talk a little bit about that difference. If it falls as warrantable and it meets the guidelines, then you're going to fall under typical conventional mortgage financing in that instance. And you're going to get typical fixed rates as your options and typical terms without balloons and without adjustments. When it comes to being non-warrantable, it's more of a non fanny non freddie product, also known as maybe a portfolio or bank product where you can still get a loan, but they're going to want more money down you're probably gonna have a balloon, it's probably not going to be a fixed interest rate, and it's probably not gonna be fully amortized over 30 years as a possibility. So that's a pretty big difference. Now, even when you're looking and fitting in that Fannie and Freddie box, a condo is gonna cost you a little more because you're gonna pay a higher interest rate because they charge hits to the pricing or to the rate that you see because even if it's warrantable, they still consider it to be a higher risk. If you're enjoying the content, don't forget to like it. It tells YouTube that you want to see more of this type of content. I'm actually going to pull my little cheat sheet here, which is one of the Fannie and or Freddie questionnaires. There's a short form and there's a long form. Some of the questions that are going to make the difference, or shall I say some of the answers to the questions that are going to make the difference are things such as they want to know the total number of units in the project. They want to know how many of those units are sold and closed. That would apply if it's a newer project and not all of them have been turned over yet. They also want to know the number of units under bona fide sales contracts. They want to know the number of units sold to owner occupants, the number of units sold to people for second homes, the number of units sold that will be considered investment property or the highest of all the risk riskiness of the different loans. They want to know if more than one person has ownership of more than 10% of the development. What does that mean? So let's say if the development has 10 units and an investor has decided to purchase four of those units, that's going to be 40%. And that would make it just that one thing would make it non-warrantable. Even if you passed go through all of the other questions on the questionnaire. They're also going to want to know if the HOA owns any units and how many, and they're going to want to know things such as has the HOA taken over from the developer of the development. Those are just a few of the questions on even the short form. And there's actually also a long form, but these things help them determine the riskiness of the project and therefore whether or not they're deeming it warrantable or non and whether or not they want to do the loan. What we were just talking about is conventional loans. What about FHA? FHA actually has an approved list. It means that the condo development actually met all the criteria to get on the FHA approved condo list. Let's just give you one example of, let's say you might have 50 developments within a 300 mile radius of where you're living. It's not gonna be uncommon if maybe only 10 or 15 or dramatically less than that actually show up on the FHA approved list. It takes time, it takes money, and it takes energy. So a lot of these condos are not on the approved list. Why do you want to be on the approved list? Well, if you're not going conventional, but you're gonna finance utilizing FHA financing, 
If they are on the approved list, FHA will finance that condo, assuming that you approve for financing as well, because you're getting the approval on both you and the condo development itself. And with VA, most of the time, if you're using VA financing and it's on the FHA approved list, then it will also be approvable for VA. But don't be confused. It does not have to be on the list for VA to finance it. You're gonna have to go through that process to see if VA will, but don't assume they won't if it's not on the FHA list. The same thing applies for rural development, USDA, RD, AKA rural development loans. If they're on the FHA list, makes it so easy and so smooth. However, if they're not on the list, you still may be able to finance the condo in that particular development, even though they're not on the list. So don't assume. Keep pushing through and keep trying to get that condo if it's the one that you want to purchase. I bet it would be helpful to you if I drop a link to that HUD FHA approved condo list below so that you have it and you can quickly get some answers to these questions. What are you thinking? Do you think buying a condo is just way too much of a hassle and it's like going to be a hard pass for you? Or are you thinking it might still benefit you? Drop me a comment. I know that you are all wondering why in the world are lenders making it so complicated to finance condos? Think about it this way. If I'm financing you as a lender for a single family home, it's you and me. I'm depending upon you and I have scrubbed and vetted you as a good borrower that you're going to maintain the property. You're going to maintain the insurance. You're going to pay the taxes. You're going to upkeep everything and you're going to pay on time. When it comes to a condo, I'm also throwing an association into the loop. I'm now not depending upon just you to work with just me to get all those things done. Now there's a whole association. And on top of the whole association, if it's a project that has let's just say 10 units, right? There's probably a lot more than that, but let's just say 10 to keep it simple. Now I'm depending upon me and you and 10 people and an association because you're not the one maintaining the exterior. You're not the only one actually keeping up with the property taxes, the home insurance and so on and so forth. There's a lot more hands in the pot and I did not vet those other 10 people. So it is a huge risk for me as a lender looking at a single family home versus a condo. Are condos cheaper? Actually, it depends on your perspective. From the first angle, condos are not going to be cheaper. If you're buying a single family home, let's say that home insurance costs you hundred bucks a month, everything remaining the same, but comparing it to a condo. You still have walls and insurance. Let's say that costs you 70 bucks a month. So you're like, oh, well, I'm already saving 30, but the condo association dues might be $200 a month. So you're actually spending a lot more for the condo. Too many people are like, I'm getting a condo because it's cheaper and there's not full blown home insurance. I'm going to save money. That's not the case, but flip that perspective. They're taking care of walls out. So you don't have exterior maintenance. You don't have to pay someone to cut your grass. You may not have to pay for chemicals for a pool and you have the luxury of having a pool. Maybe the association has a gym, so you're saving on gym memberships, and maybe they even have a playground. So there's a lot of benefits as well. It's not always necessarily cheaper, but sometimes can be a little bit cheaper. It's really case by case and actually more of what is important and what is valuable to you. I couldn't cover the entire long and short form of the condo questionnaires in today's video. So I'm going to go ahead and drop a link below so you can see all of the questions and information that they're going to want to know about the condo you're thinking of purchasing. If you've enjoyed today's video and you're looking at investing in any type of real estate, be sure to check out my other video. I'll drop the link below talking about the $15,000 first time homebuyer tax credit.